So, Steve, I have a question. I use Visio all the time. I make, you know, org charts, flow charts, but you're telling me now I can put data inside these yeah, diagrams? Visio is a, a great program for, for visualizing all those things you're talking about, doing timelines, making networks and processes and that sort of thing. But uh, when you link data to it, that makes it, makes it even more powerful as a communicator of, of uh, various types of information. And, and that can be all kinds of things. Let me show you a couple examples. This is, this is essentially a standard uh, flow chart like people have seen, but you can see that there's uh, each of these each of these shapes has some data performance data how how things are doing in each of these steps, um, and this is this is data that uh, that you can attach to the the diagram just like we're about to show. And this is a similar sort of thing. This is a uh, a network diagram that uh, a, an administrator can look at this and say they can see exactly how these machines are performing. You can see where there might be problems, what he might have to do, and Get us get a sense down here. This is all the kind of information that they can attach to this. The great thing about Visio is you can see all these technical things that we just we just saw. Right, but the it servers and the, yeah, it doesn't yeah. have to be a massive uh, enterprise sort of thing like that. It can be something that uh, that folks like you or I could use. Like okay. for example, what we're going to do today here is an org chart. This is a marketing team that you, Dave, are in charge of. Congratulations, by the way. This on, is on my your, team on your promotion. This is your prom this is your team right here. Okay. What we're going to do is we're just going to attach some some HR and some performance data to this so that you can see when you get this org chart, you can look at it and you can see within seconds. You know, you can have an impression of of how your team is measuring up against these things that you uh, that you expect huh. of them. Okay, show me. And so what we're going to do, we have all of our data here on an Excel spreadsheet. You can see everybody's names here, and there's some HR data. Here's some budget data. Here's some performance data. So what we're going to do, there's a two-step process for attaching data data to, to a, a, a Visio diagram. First is we bring all that, that big lump of data and attach it generally to the diagram. And the second step is we're going to attach each row of the, doc, of the data <coughs> into the shape that it belongs to here in the diagram. All right. And all of this happens up here on the data tab, up here in the ribbon. The data tab, we're going to click link data to shapes. That's going to open up a wizard, and you can see the types of data you can uh, you can incorporate. You can uh, access SharePoint, SQL. You can do Exchange directories. Uh, um, you know anything really that you can configure as a database can be linked to a Visio diagram. But it can be as simple as it can be as simple simple as an Excel workbook. That's what okay. most people have have their data in. That's what we're going to do today. Uh, this is where you would select the, the workbook you want to import. Fortunately, I've used mine just recently, new org, new org chart data, so I can find mine right there. Otherwise, you can browse for it and find it. It can be on your hard drive, can be on a network somewhere. Yep. Cool. Then that's where you bring that in. And you can see that it's pulling in the data right now. Give it a second. What worksheet arranged? I happen to know that the stuff I want to connect to this, this diagram is on sheet two. I'm going to select that here. This is where we pick a unique identifier. Each of the rows in the data has is is unique to all the rest of them, and and one of the one of the columns typically in this database identifies each row as something that's unique. In my case, it's the name because that's that's the name of each of the people here. Now, if I had two Mary Joneses or something in this org, then you might have to use a a personal ID number or something like that. Or if we're talking about an inventory, it might be a, a SKU number or a serial okay. number or something like that. But right. something that that makes it distinct from all the rest of the of the data. Got it. So ours is name. That's all all we need here. And boom, I have successfully imported my data. And but I it doesn't finish. look like it. I click finish. What happens down here? You can see the external uh, okay. data sheet, and here's all the information that was in our Excel database, our our spreadsheet. And it's all, it now essentially belongs to this diagram in general. And so our, uh, our first step is completed. Now what we want to do is connect each of these rows of data to the shape that they belong to. You're, you're okay it. so far? Everybody's okay so far? I think so, yeah. So we've just done half of the steps. That is, yep. we've, we have the data imported and, I guess, connected to this diagram. We haven't associated it with shapes. That's exactly okay. right. So that's what we're going to do now. There's a couple ways you can do that. One, if you have a few of these rows of, of uh, data that you want to connect to a few of these, sh these uh, shapes, you can just drag them and put them on top of the shape they belong to. And then you can see here that down in the external data window, there's a little linked uh, icon that says James Alfred's data is now connected to the shape it belongs to. 
And you can do that if, you know, for a few of these. If you've got a whole bunch of data and a whole bunch of shapes, that's going to get really tedious and really long really quick. Right. So the data, just to review real quick, the data for James Alford is off to the side here. Uh, f at the moment. I'm okay. going to show you what we can do about that. And okay. I'm actually going to undo what I just did because mm -hmm. what I want to do is connect all this data to all these shapes all at once. Okay. I'm going to select the shapes. by, w and I'm going to do that by pressing Control-A, which selects everything in the diagram. And I'm going to come up here to the Data tab again, click Automatically Link. And I'm going to tell it which sets of shapes, and I want it to connect to all of them. And I click Next, and here's where we connect the unique identifier from our data to the unique identifier in our, in our diagram, which also is name in, in this case. Works okay. out So the name and the handily. data yep. will be the name in the diagram. Just what unique identifier in the data connects to what unique identifier in the, in the diagram. Okay. Here's the confirmation of what I want to do. I click Finish, and bang, everything now, all the data is connected. You can see down here all these, all these rows of data have the linked icon, and you can see here's the information, everybody's information is up here with it, which is kind of a default thing with Visio that I actually don't want it to do right now because I'm going to show you what, how to make that happen next. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of that for just the moment, but what I'm going to show you now is just we'll confirm that all this data is connected. Let me get this a little bit more out of the way. I'm going to click Shape Data Window up here in the Data tab. And that opens up this little thing. And so what each time we click one of these shapes, you can see the shape, the data that belongs to it is displayed right there. Here's here's all, all of our stuff. Okay, wait, so here's, this is all of his here's data? Here's Jonas. Yeah, this is all the data from our, our spreadsheet. And you can see when we click each of these Got shapes, it. all the data that belongs to that particular shape is now associated with it. Cool. It's all right here. Which is cool. You, you now have a way you can look into each of these people's uh, information, see all the all the data that you, you brought over with them. but we can add even more punch to this by using data graphics, which, mean, which makes it essentially a performance dashboard. You can look hmm. at this and within seconds, you can have an immediate glimpse at, at how everybody's performing against certain things that you have in mind. So like, instead of looking at an Excel spreadsheet... And going through row over row over row and trying to associate it with, okay. with the diagram, what we're going to do is make it instantly visual like we saw in some of those other diagrams we looked nice. at a couple of minutes ago. Okay, cool. So here's how that's going to work. Again, I'm going to press Control-A, which selects all of this, and I'm going to come up to Data Graphics, also coincidentally in the Data um, tab. Create new data graphic. And click new item. So we have a whole bunch of things down here in our spreadsheet that we're going to show, that we can show, I should say. I'm going to show first percent spend YTD. Now you can't have a business uh, spreadsheet without some three-letter acronyms. Right. Y YTD is year to date. So this is a percent of, it, percent of the budget they have spent so far this year. Okay. We're going to show that. And there's there are a bunch of different ways you can show uh, data graphically here in in Visio, uh, data bars and icon sets, which are all really kind of cool. I'm going to pick a data bar because this is a number, and I'm going to out of those, I'm going to pick the progress bar, which shows a portion of something up to a maximum. And, prog and since we're talking about percentage, that's a portion of something up to a hundred, and so right. a progress bar is totally natural for that sort of thing. And down here, the details you can you can set up where you want uh, certain things and and how big. I'm going to make the label the label position inside the graphic, and we'll see what that means here in just a second. I click OK and click OK. Do I want to apply this data graphic to the shapes? Yes, I do. And boom, there they are. You can see here, here's all our, uh, our data graphics. The, the percent spend YTD bar is right there next to all of them. We can see cool. how much each of, them is ex each of them is spending, except for these down here, it looks like they're colliding with the shapes next to them. They're sort of under them. So we got some positioning problems. And position is something that you can you can adjust, come in and play with, and, and just see where it looks like it's best okay. in your uh, in your in your diagram. I'm going to go to Edit Data Graphic and click this and edit again. And I'm going to change the default position. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to move this data bar from the side to be right underneath. I'm going to put it in the center horizontally. I'm going to put it on the bottom edge vertically. And that should look a lot better when I click OK and OK. Now we can see everybody's percent spend. You can, you can see immediately right underneath everybody's shape. And you can, you can look and see that here's Miles. He's spending about 91%. Diane, about 91%. You might want to ease them back a little cool, bit on their right. spending. 
right. and Jonas here is about 57%. Maybe he can be a little bit more active or something. So you've got this instant way. That or maybe can, he's saving us some money. He could be saving some money. Yeah. He, he could be smart. You know, he needs to control Diane a little bit, sounds like. Yeah. But uh, you have an instant way to get some uh, information you can make a decision one, decision about. Now, you can add more than one data graphic to, to a chart. We're going to add another one. Uh, it all comes down to... You don't want to add too many or they're going to start stomping on each other and getting in the way and obscuring data and something like that. So just kind of be judicious about it, but you can add more than one. Now, if I w come up here to data graphics and create new data graphic, what's going to happen is it'll replace the progress bar that I just put there. So I'm going to actually click edit data graphic. And here you have a have the option to, to create a new one, okay. which is an addition. So this time the field I'm going to show is this executive training and people, you know, our, our upper management VPs, even the guys, even above you, David, even okay. those guys want to know that people have taken this course. So they're we're going to show that holding me responsible for yep, this. Yep, your feet to the fire. This you need to get you need to get your people trained. Okay, we're going to do a color by value, which what that does, depending on the answer, yes or no, here is going to change the shape, color. And so we're going to have it so red means no, they have not taken this course. Let's make green to indicate yes, they've taken the course. And we click OK a couple of times. And you can see here we've got some folks mm. in your org that still have some, uh, have some training to do. Even, a couple, of, even yeah. a couple of your directors here, David. You, these are some folks that looks like you need to call them in on the carpet. Okay, And cool. uh, find out what's going on. So this gives me an at-a-glance view of this. I don't have to go walking around yep. to offices asking if they took the training. You know if they have or haven't. Okay. And you can see what their percentage spend is like and on and, and whatever uh, of the other data that you want to show here too. Now, now the great thing about this is you're, most companies are getting data from all over the place from various sources across the company. And so the data changes all the time. The great thing is this is dynamic. These these uh, data graphics are dynamic. So when the data changes, these can change too. Let's open our Excel spreadsheet again. Let's let's say that since this this spreadsheet was built, a few of these people actually have gone through and taken this this training course. Now again, this may happen automatically. You you probably won't have to go in and do this this yourself. Right. But uh, let's uh, let's right because you might be connected to a database. Yeah. that does this automatically. Yeah, that's getting getting sales reports from all over the place or, or whatever. And so now uh, we can go to refresh all up here in the data tab. We'll we'll go to refresh all. Let's actually again make sure that we've selected all the shapes. We'll go refresh all and let it finish its thing. You can see here there's a progress bar. It's completed, and we see there's a whole bunch of people now that actually have taken the course. There's only two people here you need to call on the carpet okay. and give them, read them the riot act for not having taken this course. So I could open this diagram, refresh it periodically, and see, okay, what's changed in my on my team? Yeah. Okay. And without looking at a database, without looking at And without at having Excel. to filter through that, it, yeah. this does it for you. You can even come up here to refresh, and you can set it to refresh automatically every X number of minutes. Oh, one, okay. if you've got really active data, or it can be you know several thousand if you want to give it a few days or something like that. Cool. And that will just refresh for me. It does it automatically for you. So you, as the manager, have, have your information changing for you on the fly. You can make decisions like that. Wow, that's amazing. So if you're more of a visual person, you don't want to look at Excel. You don't want to look at a database. You don't want to look at maybe even a Word doc. You just you want to, to see. Sift it. Yeah, you want to see spatially you don't have represented. Time to do that. Yeah, you just want something spatially, visually represented, and you want that updated. This is the way to go. Link data to diagrams. So thanks, Steve, for that awesome demo. Very glad I could help. Yeah. Uh, thanks, everyone, today for coming to this Office 15-minute webinar. Thanks, everyone in the room who helped out today. Chris Hopkins, Chris Burns, Chris Downs. A lot of Chris's today in the room. Bruce Bracken, of course. If you have more questions about um, data in Visio diagrams, you can go to our blog post for this webinar, which is aka.ms slash Visio Data 123. We've got links to articles, blog posts, videos, and we even have a link to, what is it, a 90 minute? It's like a really deep dive webinar by uh, some really, really knowledgeable people. You want the full details about this sort of stuff, every every bit of it. That's, okay. that's a great place so, to go. So if this is just whetting your appetite, get in there, sign up for that webinar, and you can learn all the nitty gritty about linking data to diagrams. 
Next week, come back because we're going to talk about five steps to a better PowerPoint. Doug Thomas will be back to talk about that topic. So thanks again for coming and stick around for the Q&A.